All right, we are here for NXT Heat Wave. Uh, we start off with a really hot match here. <laughs> Fabian Eichner versus Carmelo Hayes, heel on heel for the North American title. Uh, Lord is a... I, I don't want to call him fucking Leonardo da Vinci or whatever the fuck is. He's just Fabian Eichner. Uh, Fabian is killing this man with some of the loudest chops I've ever heard. Uh, Fabian with the U can't escape. You see, we, we get Kenny not doing it, but then we get Fabian does it. He hits the, you know, the little roll through in the moon, saw for a near fall. Uh, reverse draping leg drop by Mello for a near fall. Uh, Fabian goes to hit his rocket launcher brain buster, but he almost drops Mello, but he ends up fixing it. Uh, hits the brain buster for a near fall. Mello with a gourd buster cutter. That was really cool. I've never seen that before. Uh, fucking Fabian hits his uh, Escalera and hits his big dive on the outside. Uh, then a big double springboard moonsault. This guy's amazing, dude. Because if you see Fabian, this is just fucking Jack. Uh, Jesus. Uh, fucking Fabian ends up killing Mello. Fabian has this really cool clothesline where he catches your foot and he just says, fuck you to your head, fuck you to your life, fuck your dreams, fuck your life. And he just takes your head off of a clothesline. Uh, Trick keeps getting involved over and over and over again. Uh, he power bombs uh, Trick into Mello, uh, steals it with a roll up. Basically, Mello got lucky. He should have not won this match, but it was good shit. Both of these guys are amazing. Uh, Diamond Mine comes out, and the whole time we've been having Roderick Strong kind of trying to ruin Diamond Mine. Uh, they say Roddy is trying to break up Diamond Mine. Roddy says he's not. They show proof of Roddy apparently colluding. Collusion with um freaking um uh Tony D'Angelo. I don't know, some stuff is happening here, but then Gallus debuts because NXT UK is dead. Shout out to NXT UK. Uh, I sadly couldn't keep up with it as much as I could. I kept up with it a lot in the beginning, then I kind of took a break in the middle. Um, but then I came back with um, um uh, Eli Dragonoff won the championship because that's legit. That's the fucking goat right there. That dude can do no wrong. <laughs> That dude reminds me of Kenny Omega when he was at his heat in New Japan. That guy is so fucking good. But yeah, we're going to get NXT Europe in uh, 2023. We're going to get a big version of NXT UK. Uh, sadly, a lot of the UK talent did get let go, but I'm pretty sure they're all going to be brought back for Europe. Probably just letting them go for now and just resign them later. Because imagine having like 20, 30 people sitting at home. I wish they could just merge. NXT UK and NXT together, because right away having all the NXT UK guys show up was pretty cool. Uh, Roxanne here versus Cora Jade. Uh, Roxanne skips her entrance and goes right at Cora Jade. Uh, hits two dives to uh, start it off. Uh, gets a beat down here. Rox wanted to use the kendo stick, but doesn't have it in her. Cora Jade hits her with a double arm DDT on the kendo stick for the win. I'm um, liking uh, Evil Cora Jade. Roxanne is awesome, but she needs to change her god awful theme music. It's so bad. It feels like someone's having like a puffy stroke in the beginning. Uh, we got an all or nothing street fight here. Uh, uh, Santos Escobar versus Tony D. If Santos loses, he must leave NX Tizzle. Uh, Santos is legit a star, a mega star. Like, legit. This is. Like, I always said Andrade, to me, would have been the perfect uh, Spanish big superstar. But honestly, Santos is even more for the job. I think Andrade is a better wrestler, but Santos is also one of the best wrestlers I've ever seen. But he talks perfect English. And he's very good at cutting promos. Very fucking good. So Santos legit could be everything they would need. The guy's a good babyface. The guy's a good heel. He's good at everything. Even that thing he did when he first debuted and he tricked everybody and he fucking took the mat. That was good shit. Uh, but this is a good match here. Uh, we got a chair right away with Tony D. Trash can lit to Santos trying to do the sacred arrow dive. Tony D with a suplex on a pile of chairs on the outside. Uh, hits a fucking Santos. Uh, hits a crazy sacred arrow dive through the post uh, to freaking um, Tony D. Both family keeps fighting it out. They all keep getting involved. Tony D ends up taking out Electro Lopez by mistakes. Uh, low blow to Santos. Uh, freaking. So they do this thing where Santos looks at the crowbar. I mean, uh, the brass knuckles. And Tony D looks at the crowbar. Whoever reaches their weapon first basically will kill the other one. Tony D reaches the weapon first and kills Santos with a great crowbar shot. I don't know what that thing's made of, but that thing's awesome. 
and he is gone from NXT in his main roster time. And I haven't had a chance to review Raw and SmackDown, but I have enjoyed every single show that Triple H has put on since. Uh, I'm telling you, this old man is gone, and we're on the righteous land of promise. As always, Stark versus Mandy Rose for the NXT Women's Title. Uh, Nikita helps take out Toxic Attraction. Many of her uh, freaking uh, Mandy hits her inverted side slam for a near fall. Stark hits her really cool finish. Her uh, back suplex into the big knee, but it's so, her knee is so banged up that it's been getting aimed at the whole match. She can't capitalize. Mandy slides out of there. Mandy with a V-trigger, but Zoe actually kicks out. I think that's the first person to kick out of Mandy's V-trigger. Then Mandy ends up using Zoe's knee brace to hit another V-trigger for the win. I thought that was a creative finish. Uh, J.D. McDonough versus Braun Breaker in the main event here. And this match was fucking great. I'll tell you, man, Braun delivers in these main events. And uh, J.D. over there, uh, the Irish Ace, he's very fucking good. This guy, I'm telling you, you want to watch a match? Watch Jordan Devlin versus Ela Dragunov in that fucking, um, uh, what is it, like, street fight they had? Crazy good. Uh, Braun is trying to out-wrestle JD, trying to show some skill. Uh, nice hammerlock belly-to-belly by Braun. That was, the way he does suplexes looks so fucking clean. Then it's a nice, beautiful standing moonsault. Uh, like I said, Braun gets better every single day. It's crazy. Uh, JD with a neck breaker over the top rope steel turnbuckle. That had to suck. Uh, LaBelle lock locked in by JD. Top rope Frankensteiner by Braun. Uh, JD returns, returns the favor with a top rope Spanish fly. And then he ends up deadlifting him back up and hitting a nasty brain buster for a near fall. Uh, Braun fights out of it finally. Hits a big spear. Hits another spear. JD gets up and he starts bleeding from the mouth. He wants more. He starts laughing because he's like a fucking pain lover or whatever. Uh, another spear. Military press slam into the win here. Fun match. Very good shit here. Uh, then the NXT UK champion Tyler Bate comes out. The big strong boy. And he wants a champion his champion match. Because they're having a Worlds Collide pay-per-view thing again. I like. I really like those shows. That's where we got... um. The fantastic match of Imperium versus uh, Undisputed Era. Or fucking, I don't know. I think it was Bobby Fish got taken out legitly. That match was crazy good, man. It was so good. But yeah, uh, that's this week in wrestling there. Caught up a little stuff. Uh, like I said, the next episode will be all G1 related. Going to review the whole entire G1. And uh, why Will Ospreay should have won. Uh, but uh, the, that's it for me. I'll catch you guys next time. You use K92 for all the social medias. Peace out.